Hello and welcome to the MIT System Design and Management Program's Systems Thinking Webinar Series. My name is Lois Slavin. I'm SGM's Communications Director and I will be your host for today. Before I formally introduce you to today's presenter, Arvind Ratnam, I'd like to just give those of you who are not familiar with SGM a small bit of background. SDM is MIT's master's program for mid-career professionals, offered jointly by the MIT Sloan School of Management and the MIT School of Engineering. SDM provides an education that focuses on integrating the technical, business, and socio-political components of complex challenges using strategy and systems thinking. Graduates earn a Master of Science in Engineering and Management from MIT. This series features research and experience of SDM faculty, alumni, students, and industry partners. This series is designed to show how to apply strategic systems thinking to address the engineering, management, and socio-political components of complex challenges in any domain. Recordings from prior SDM webinars can be accessed and viewed on demand at sdm.mit.edu. You will be sent a link to the slides and, and the recording of today's webinar in about one week, along with Arvind's contact info. With that, I would like to introduce SDM alumnus Arvind Ratnam. He is the head of Connected Vehicles at Wind River, and we're very excited about his presentation. No pressure, Arvind, um, but it has uh, garnered, garnered the, a record number of registrants, the highest for any SDM alum. And with that, I turn it over to Arvind. Thank you, Louis. Um, uh, presume you can see my screen? Yes. Okay, okay good. All right, so let me, let me get started. Thank you for the, for the very kind introduction. Um, uh, I thought uh, I would spend an hour um, uh, talking about uh, my own life um, after uh, SDM, uh, after I passed out uh, in 2011. And, uh, and 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 reflect upon my own career, uh, which has mostly been in in strategy uh, after STM, and and offer a few insights uh, from it. Uh, uh, hopefully, that will benefit uh, some uh, past, current, and, and and future students in STM. And I really call it as 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 uh, it's it's really been quite an adventure uh, for me uh, because when I uh, went into strategy, I didn't really know what to expect. And uh, the 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 other side of it was was actually quite uh, quite pleasant, and and uh, there are there, there have been many learnings along the way, and and I'm hoping to share some of that with you. So uh, uh, the the purpose of this webinar is really to uh, uh, to expose strategy and strategic thinking, um, um, and connect that with. Uh, some of the the learnings from uh, SD, SDM that that some of you hopefully will experience yourself. Um, uh, and, and when I say SDM, it's a, a what you know. I'm going to uh, uh, broadly put SDM within a, a ca the, the category of of of, of uh, advanced business learning, advanced techno business learning. Um, and you know it could it could be your MBA, it could be um, it could be uh, any other qualification. It doesn't even have to be formal qualification, but uh, the, the the kind of learning that uh, that STM uh, provides. So it's it's really that 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 has a broad broad, broad category. So um, there is the second uh, acronym that I'd like to introduce. Uh, well, not not an acronym, but but this this term called system thinking um, um, uh, that that SDM likes to uh, advocate, but what it is is the ability to uh, see the forest for the trees, the ability to see very large, broad patterns and apply uh, critical uh, uh, critical thinking skills and, and then solve fairly hard problems in a, in a holistic uh, uh, manner. I want to tie all of that to, 
the discipline of strategy um, uh, based on based on my experience. And uh, again, the audiences uh, uh, that, that, that I'd like to uh, communicate this to is past, current, and future students who are interested in um, the nature of strategy work, right? And, and when I say strategy work, it's again, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, fairly broad, uh, pertains to uh, management consulting, uh, corporate strategy, general management, and, and, and closely related careers. Uh, uh, the, 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 the preamble or the caveat that I'd like to say right away is this goal, the goal is not to how, not, not about how to get into management consulting and, and, you know, while I would like to, uh, help, uh, some of you out, um, you know, uh, don't, <laughs> don't ask me to help you choose between, between different firms or, or, you know, help you get through case interviews or whatever. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's something that you should be able to get outside. Um, with that uh, said, uh, let's dive in. Um, so I'm going to to give you a better perspective of, of uh, who I am. Uh, I'm going to walk you through my own journey uh, over the past uh, past few years. Um, the the thing is that uh, I, I really wanted to be an astronaut when I was a, when I was a kid, and um, I uh, grew up around the world. Um, um, I've spent time at both the Indian and the uh, United States space programs. Uh, um, the, after I moved to the U.S., I don't know how many years ago, uh, the, uh, I spent a couple of years at NASA, got my master's in space science and physics, and went to a laser company called Symer, uh, which got acquired by this, um, this six or seven billion dollar Dutch company called ASML. They make very cool things. They make scanners um, that uh, go on semiconductor fab floors. Uh, so some, some of these scanners are worth maybe a hundred million dollars, so they cost more than jet fighters, and they are the most accurate pointing devices on the planet. They can take a laser beam and align it to within five atom bits, and it's, it's when one of these things goes down, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy expensive. So I, I gained a lot of experience as a scientist, as a system engineer, an algorithms engineer, and eventually as a, a what they call as a key account technologist, a product technologist uh, working on it. And then I, in 2010, um, uh, you know, I, I saw my career uh, in uh, engineering going well, but uh, sort of plateauing out and obviously business learning was uh, what would take me to the next level, but I didn't want to lose that touch with my technical past. And I'm sure a lot of you who uh, are looking at the STM program have um, have had similar stories. Uh, but I uh, I entered the STM program. I, uh, I, I did the two-year full-time on-campus full program because I, I wanted a personal transformation. I, I didn't want to do it part-time or, or anything, but you know, obviously some of your situations are different. The, um, uh, the, I, w I interned at two different places, uh, one uh, at Cognex, uh, that was a summer internship in Natick, not far from Cambridge, um, and uh, one at uh, a <laughs> very different experience at, uh, at uh, Ermina Gildo Zenia, which is actually a luxury uh, fashion retailer, uh, because I wanted uh, the, the, the complete opposite experience. And I, you know, it's, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a sales focused uh, two month internship, uh, but you know, it gave me a totally different perspective, but that, that's what personal transformation is all about. You have to challenge yourself, put yourself in situations that you're, you don't, uh, you're not necessarily comfortable with and then learn from it. Uh, in the meantime, I also tried to start a company. Uh, it was, uh, actually, the, the idea was born out of a, um, of, a, of a product that kind of came out of a class that I took at MIT. It didn't, it didn't really work. We don't really need to delve on that. But anyway, so that was that was my two years at um, at MIT. Coming outside, uh, I, I, I joined Monitor Deloitte. Uh, I joined the strategy and operations group. Um, uh, uh, focusing on technology, media, and telecom, um, and I was tremendously lucky uh, to uh, work on some very, very interesting projects. And I'm going to talk to you about what kind of engagements uh, uh, I was involved in, and hopefully that will uh, get you a little bit of a flavor. But that really set the tone for a st strategy career. I think I, I, management consulting is is really great. First of all, it's a great extension of of uh, your business school, but it's also uh, uh, it also gets you really great training for uh, anything that you want to do in uh, this general area of uh, of strategy. So I was uh, with uh, with Monitor Deloitte for two years. 
then I joined, uh, I, you know, it was a, you know, big companies have a way of growing on you. Uh, and I worked incredibly hard uh, the, the, the two years that I was at Monitor Deloitte for, but, but I aspired uh, for uh, something different, uh, where I, you know, a place where I could um, uh, establish my own personal brand in a stronger way, and that's obviously hard when you have 30,000 consultants running around uh, you. So I joined as a, a boutique firm called uh, Interactive Broadband Group, IBB, uh, they are the leaders in uh, cable and media and broadband um, uh, uh, consulting. So it's, it's obviously they're, they're much more niche, uh, very focused. I'm also going to talk about an engagement that I did while I was out there. The uh, you know I think large uh, firms have their pros and cons. Small firms have their pros and cons. But either way, I did that for about a year and a half, and until I got to a point where I wanted to get off the road. And then um, uh, I joined Wind River, which is actually part of uh, Intel. It was a 2009 acquisition. Uh, the first uh, the first two years, I, I ran strategy for the company, uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> you can see that over the over the 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 past few years, I've lost a bit of hair. But uh, that's where I ended up with. And then and earlier this year, I I took another job in. Uh, within our uh, connected vehicles group and we are one of the leading connected vehicle software uh, providers and I, I I run all our products there so so that, that's that's really uh, where I am that's been my journey and and and, and the focus of this webinar will be uh, the last uh, six or so years uh, yeah uh, and then and, and how my own personal uh, strategy career has has sort of shaped up um, uh, the, the the approximate flow is uh, after doing the kickoff. I'm going to talk about strategy as a destiny uh, and introduce the discipline of strategy and then what, what its relevance is. Um, we are going to go over some um, uh, strategy case examples. Um, uh, the, the, you know, you'll, you'll find this very useful in terms of giving you a, a perspective. Career takeaways, uh, my own reflections. Um, the um, you know you know what, what you know if I if I were to sort of summarize my experience what you know the my 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 broad sweep on the on the whole thing and then and then I want to spend uh, a significant amount of time in in helping you guys uh, or giving you guys some resources that might sort of help you help you uh, get to a career that might look uh, that might that might be along the lines of something like this or. You know, I'm not saying you know that this is the this is the, this is this is what you should aspire to be. But uh, if you're interested in anything related to strategy, some of these things should be able to help you out, right? What, what sort of attributes you you may want to gain and uh, on a personal basis, what sort of preparation you'll need, um, what sort of resources you want to go after, etc. All right, let's dive in. Uh, we'll have Q and A at the end. So uh, I say strategy as a as a destiny uh, because there are school two schools of thought there. Um, you know, you're you're either a strategist or you're not, kind of thing. And um, it's 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 you know the thing is the joke is that within the strategy community, which is not very big, uh, you can spot a strategist away from a mile because there is a certain way in which they they uh, carry themselves, they 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 post their arguments, they. Um, there's a certain way in which they communicate their ideas. Um, there's a certain clarity with which, uh, with which uh, they can take a hard problem and then make it, uh, you know, uh, and then break it down and then and then have a very um, a crisp uh, point of view on it and you know take it forward. And then the, the school of thought is some of it is, is has to come naturally, but the other part of it can be trained. So obviously we can't control the natural part, but you know we can focus on on, on what sort of training you'll need uh, in order to to get there. So why are we doing this? Why is strategy important? Um, so if you look at the big picture, right? And then uh, the World Economic Forum uh, did this thing called the Future of Jobs Report, and they talked about what would be the 10 most desirable skills of an employee be in uh, 2020, right? And and how would that compare? with what we have today in 2015, right? Um, creativity is uh, actually becoming more and more important. Um, judgment and decision making uh, is getting up there. Uh, things like negotiation. The, the, the negotiation is a very conventional idea. The, and then the thing is, there are there are certain concepts such as, uh, well, negotiation is one, but the, the, the concept of competition is another. 
it, which, which are actually decreasing in importance uh, because the world is becoming much more of a dynamic place. This is not about someone applying Porter's forces to look at how to sell soaps because, okay, so soaps are a fairly mature market and, and you know, you, you, can, you can apply something like that there. But the, the, the world, when you think about IoT and analytics and big data and cloud and, uh, I don't know, connected vehicles and, and, and a whole bunch of other things, there's, things are moving much, much more faster. And, and so the way people uh, are, uh, need to think is, is changing. So things, very conventional ideas such as negotiation are actually decreasing in importance, which is very interesting. Um, coordinating with others uh, is actually <laughs> is actually lower, but this one caught me by surprise. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, unless you know how to work in a team, uh, you're not going to get anything done. Uh, uh, critical thinking is, is very uh, high up there as well. So uh, in addition to the ones that I pointed out, things like creativity and uh, emotional intelligence and service orientation, these are all things that are new on the radar. These are things that were not that did not exist a few years ago, right? With automation happening and, 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 and the world going where it is, there's this new host of skills that are being uh, uh, asked um, that will be that, that will be called upon. And what it is is that there is the, you, you need fairly um, uh, you, you need a you need a skill set that that uh, that is fairly broad. Uh, at the same time, you you need to be very organized yourself in order to not get lost in all this information that is swimming around us. You know, there's real news, there's fake news, there's um, uh, there's there's good stuff, there's bad stuff. How do you how do you weed out all of that uh, that 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 noise and and, and keep just the signal high uh, and then cut out the noise uh, you know part of that is is the strategic thinking mindset and 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 and, and that's one of that's one of the drivers for uh, acquiring uh, that mindset uh, to to begin with right so sy systems thinking is is, a, is is as as a discipline has existed for a few years but strategy really uh, uh, comes up when you marry systems thinking with reflection and reframing Systems thinking as a tool set uh, can often be taught through frameworks, through things like system dynamics, things like uh, things like lean, things like a lot of things that you will learn uh, at MIT. But the ability to reflect and, and reframe problems is something that is uh, partly gained by experience and partly gained by training that you must have, you must take, you must acquire through through either reading, through. Um, uh, through a bunch of other techniques that I'm go I'm going to talk about, so uh, so that the, the the discipline of strategy is is marrying all of these three things. Okay, so uh, let's sort of cut to the cut to the chase, right? Why are you all on this webinar? So why strategy careers are are, are really attractive is uh, is that a strategist really helps uh, companies go pro profitably, um, and the for me it was really attractive because it was really. Uh, almost finishing school uh, after it was, you know, we, we call these as finishing schools. Uh, after the two years that I spent at STM, and and where you get to apply every single thing that you learned during school. Uh, well, I would say every single thing. I would say a, a significant majority of it uh, in in actual like actual work. It's it's really dynamic and cerebral work. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 very exciting to see a bunch of different situations. Uh, rather than go super narrow on, on one discipline. Um, uh, and at the end of it, when you've done this for a few years, you, you, will, you, you will become a very confident business professional. You, should, you will be able to walk into any situation and add value to it instantly, right? And so that's one of the, that's one of the biggest benefits that, uh, that I saw. The, uh, you will work in, uh, very, on, on very exciting projects. Uh, it's, it's all around skill development, but you know, for, for, you know, what you're contributing to the company is, 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 is you, you, are, you will be seen as a person who understands the, where the company is going, the past, present, and future. Uh, part of what you will be doing is, uh, is work that, um, uh, that, you, you know, you, that, that, that you studied in school, uh, uh, supply chain, market analysis, forecasting, uh, product development, uh, a bunch of bunch of things, right? Oh, uh, uh, making that uh, it's a, this is a, a related but a tangential note. Uh, people often ask me, well, what kind of consulting should 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 I should I join? I think uh, the 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 answer to that is uh, as long as it is strategic enough that the people that you're working with are 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 decision makers in the company. Uh, it, it will be good work. 
So, uh, so let's keep that definition uh, fairly broad, uh, both on a consulting um, uh, type um, um, type focus as well as an you know if you go work for a Fortune 1000 company and, and you know you work for I don't know the, a general manager of a large division, uh, and then you're doing work that is similar to it, then that's good enough. You're you're doing what uh, and you're doing fairly important work. The uh, so you will work on really cool stuff, and then for, for you on a personal standpoint, uh, it's it's all around skill development. Strategy, I, I think, unequivocally is amongst the most desirable careers uh, within large organizations. Uh, the, the really great visibility to leadership, insight into decision making. The flip side of it is that um, they're they're fairly hard to get into, uh, and there's not that many openings for uh, for pure uh, strategy type uh, type work. That just because these teams tend to be small. Because what happens is when you have a very large team, then it, then decisions start to become a democracy, and certain things in the world uh, cannot be democracies, right? And then strategy work is, is, is a part part of it. Certain things have to, um, uh, uh, certain decisions have to be made uh, based on gut feel, etc. And wh when too many people get involved, you just can't get anything done, right? So it's it's really uh, and also it's not uncommon for chief strategy officers to become CEOs. So so these careers are, are fairly attractive. So career paths wise, the consulting route, uh, you guys are familiar with it coming out of an MBA you know, or, or an SDM type thing. You might start off as a senior associate and sort of work your way to partner, uh, senior partner, et cetera. If you go the corporate route, it's, it's a, a route that should be familiar to a lot of you who have not been, not had consulting exposure. You, um, you know, you manager, senior manager, director, et cetera. And you, you sort of make make your way up. And the, the important thing is that there are exit opportunities on uh, on mostly from consulting to corporate. From corporate to consulting is actually a bit harder unless you're an expert in a certain area, et cetera. Uh, and those are things that that you you guys can research outside. I, I really don't have to delve on in uh, in this in this in this talk. Okay, uh, so uh, the, let's get to the meat of it. Uh, let me go over some examples that uh, that that I myself have um, have have been through the the kind of work that I have done, so that it gives you a good uh, flavor for what I've done. Uh, my very first consulting engagement was a, a telco giant uh, trying to get into the cloud business, right? So they, 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 they're a Fortune 100. They went off and bought a bunch of cloud assets, and they said, well, they brought us in, and, and they bought Deloitte. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be specific. They brought Deloitte in, uh, and they said, well, okay, how do we win in this market? Clearly, you would have thought that they, they, they should have had a hypothesis before they bought those cloud assets, but oh, well, they didn't. This is the way the real world works, right? Uh, by the way, all the information that I'm showing here is illustrative. Uh, I have masked certain details to preserve client confidentiality, uh, and you should obviously expect that. Uh, so it was a six-person team, um, including myself, and you can see that there, are, you know, that there's a whole hierarchy. There are partner, senior manager, two consultants, etc. And consultants are usually pre-MBA, pre-SDM. You know, they come out of undergraduate schools. As and start off as analysts, I think, and then sort of work their way up. Um, so the approach was uh, we looked at the market um, uh, across a number of verticals, um, looked at unmet opportunities, prioritized top use cases, created a whole solutions playbook, clear market to go to market guidelines, etc. I, you know, I, I still remember it very well. You know, it was a six-week engagement, and we came up with a 200-page playbook, and it was it was immense. It was the the amount of work that we put in during those six weeks. I mean, we this was literally 16 to 17 hour days, and it was it was really really hectic. Um, so the client ended up, ended up creating. You can go research who they are. They're a, they're one of the top three telcos in yeah. in America. They created a hundred million dollar cloud business uh, based on the playbook that we submitted, uh, and the engagement generated lots of follow on opportunities for us. Right. So uh, this is the kind of impact that we that we delivered. Um, <laughs> my memorable mem moments. Speaking of Domino's Pizza at, at midnight. Uh, it was uh, exposure to my first Fortune 100 boardroom, and and really understanding how consulting teams function. This was really my first engagement. The second one was actually very interesting. I got put on an oil and gas company uh, uh, somewhere in the Midwest, um, 
and they, they split into two entities if you understand oil and gas there's an upstream there's a downstream one the upstream goes and digs for oil the downstream guys sell the oil as simple as that they operate the gas stations etc so they needed assistance with uh, planning it operations as uh, um, as well as with licensing contracts so what happens is when a company splits they end up with a bunch of contracts. The question is, what do they do with those contracts, and what's the what's the strategy around them? Well, I mean, as a cons as a management consultant, you don't you don't expect to go in and go with those individual contracts and and assign them to people, etc. But uh, you you're often brought in to study them and and at least at least deliver some sort of a strategy to deal with them. Well, you can ask me, what does all uh, what does oil and gas have to do do with lasers and and semiconductors and all the SDM learning and all of that? See, the whole point of 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 of, uh, of consulting is uh, to be able to walk into any situation and add value. You are really paid. Uh, you're really um, brought in for your critical problem-solving skills and then uh, you, uh, for your smartness, for your ability to think on your feet, not necessarily for your expertise in uh, oil and gas. Either way, uh, it was a five-month-long time and material engagement somewhere in Oklahoma. Um, and then we, it was it was it was fairly tedious uh, because it was such a large company. It's one of the largest companies in the world. Uh, we split up into operations and licensing management, and you know, the, the, I, I had some people under me. We, you know, we created a strategy. We looked at contracts recommended ways to optimize etc and then we uh, we delivered a certain amount of uh, savings at the end of the year it was, it was about 70 million uh, which which is which although is, is very big uh, is, is 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 actually not that significant for for a company of this size uh, it, at, at the end of the day my realization was and, and I intentionally presented this case because uh, whenever things are open-ended, they tend to be long projects, and it was a reminder for me to not take up such a project like that. Uh, and it, it was it was my first time in a private jet, so you you get all these benefits when you work for these large companies, and and really realizing that oil and gas wasn't wasn't really for me. So that that was what it was. The the third one was very interesting. You know, the, the, there was this Fortune 500 auto tier one. Tier one companies are the companies are the suppliers to the car makers. Uh, they can be Continental, Delphi, TRW, Vistian, all of those all of those guys. So they were going through a financial strike. They brought in Deloitte to uh, to uh, look at a large 200 million dollar function and and, uh, and 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 look to outsource part of it and really carve off a portion of the portion of the business, right? It was a three-month engagement. This was actually one of the more interesting projects that that, that I did, where um, we brought in several external pro service providers who would serve the outsourcing function. And this was they were all American uh, companies. Uh, we modeled the financial impact of outsourcing this business, uh, recommended options to pursue based on cultural fit. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, we were able to write off $130 million out of um, uh, out of our clients clients books and this was uh, I, and the reason this was interesting is that it gave me a perspective of what competition of what global competition is doing to us us manufacturing jobs that that whole belt has has had a lot of challenges and obviously we are trying to uh, the new presidency is trying to revitalize it etc but for me it was my first time leading a project um, and uh, learning how to do very complex uh, financial modeling right so um, uh, and then, you know, the financial modeling piece is very interesting because uh, it involves risk, risk decision analysis, which some of you guys will, will study when you go through the SCM program. Uh, but it also helps you understand how different parts of a business come together and then understand, you know, you know where the money, money is flowing. And when you understand where the money is flowing, a lot of things start to click in place, and a lot of things start to start to make sense. So, so even today, uh, within within my current job, uh, when I uh, came in to take on uh, automotive products within my company, the very first thing I told my product managers is to get a get a get a grip on the finances, because that's where it all starts and that's where it all it all ends. So I I, I can't emphasize it anymore. Um, the fourth one, the fourth uh, case that I wanted to present was uh, a, a leading insurance provider uh, studying driver behavior. This was uh, this was interesting because, uh, as you guys know, this this whole uh, insurance industry is going through a transformation. Um, um, some of these insurance companies are 
asking drivers to install um, these little modules under the steering wheel. Uh, they, they plug into the OBD2 module and they, they, they report driver behavior back to insurance companies so that insurance companies know how to price your contracts, right? So if you are an exceptionally good driver and, and you know you don't speed too much, you don't accelerate, take corners too hard, et cetera, they may give you a discount on your insurance policy, et cetera. So um, this was a company that brought uh, us in. Uh, it, was a, uh, it was a three month engagement. Uh, to understand whether this whole business was going to be viable, right? Uh, and it, it, it was it was it was great because uh, we created the base business model uh, for this insurance company and the monetization models. Uh, we even had a technology team um, create an architecture for how the the mobile app would work would look would look like. Uh, and this was this was done, done way back in 2012. Okay, and these things are only coming out now, which is which is great. Uh, it gave me a preview of what was happening. And uh, validated the concept, right? Uh, that 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 it would work, and it was it was my first foray into into big data and trying to understand it. But really, the the engagement was about uh, the business case, whether um, the, the 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 business made sense from a top level uh, sort of standpoint. And eventually, this this uh, insurance carrier ended up uh, deploying such a such a solution, which is which is really great. Uh, but what they also learned at the same time, uh, they, they, they deployed it as a demo, but then they, are, they understood that um, the, the U.S. market is very privacy-led. Drivers don't really like to share their data, although that situation is changing very rapidly. Back in 2013, it, it wasn't, wasn't ready. For me, the biggest thing is, uh, is, is really uh, understanding how cloud and mobile and big data sort of, sort of come together. Uh, being in Manhattan on a very generous expense account is always very nice. Uh, and then the other thing that I understood is that great consulting teams don't necessarily make great product teams. You know, the the, the uh, I, I'm not a very I'm not a great fan of the of the, the way the end product came out. But hey, this is what happens when you put a bunch of smart consultants in a room. They can come up with a smart story. They can come up with uh, a smart. Uh, um, with, with with smart analysis, sharp recommendations, etc. But building great products, uh, you really have to combine engineering skills with uh, with 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 uh, strategic thinking skills in order to get there. And, and that was missing in a team. And I, that was a good point of learning for me. Um, the last case, well, I think this is this might be the last one, but um, uh, was it was a Canadian communications company. This is when I made the switch to IBB. They were. Um, uh, this company was pioneering what's called a second screen. Basically, you you guys know that you can watch TV on your phone and tablet and and all of that. Back when I was there, that that whole concept was was new, right? Um, so they wanted to validate the pros and cons of that, and you know, and and then the the viability of such a such a thing and what the go to market strategy should be, etc. And so the approach was we looked at uh, what other cable companies are doing. Uh, we looked at competitive threats. Um, we um, uh, recommended a, a market direction um, and then and what to implement, what not to implement, et cetera. And uh, eventually this company ended up um, implementing um, uh, this, this solution uh, based and, and then using the go-to-market strategy that, that we provided. For me, uh, the, the memorable moments were walking through uh, TV post-production uh, and 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 working alongside you know what I call as green-haired UI UX designers that was, that was kind of interesting uh, go, going through the whole design process. So so this was this was uh, this was another one that was that was interesting. And and finally the one last thing that I, I I don't really want to spend too much time on because I want to focus on the next section, which is um, uh, at, at at Wind River um, uh, I, I for. A, one of the things that I did was game board market scenarios for uh, for an Intel BU, and believe it or not, I used game theory to do this. And then uh, you know that this is it's an area that 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 I studied a while ago, and that that I've been keeping in touch with, etc. So um, I worked closely with our, with our M and A guy, uh, with 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 the head of M and A for our company. Uh, you know, it was a it was a bunch of workshop. We synthesized some synthesized findings and said, okay, if this business unit goes after this strategy, here is what's going to happen. I unfortunately, since this is my company and uh, some of this is still in the works, I can't divulge too much. But 
the 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 impact the impacted business unit made a bunch of significant pivots in anticipation of some threats that we identified that came out of this game boarding workshop so this is an example of of, of direct learning from business school that that that, that got applied uh, in a in a real world sort of sort of situation and about this was and for me this was very powerful because we anticipated a certain a certain trend and then six months later we saw it happen in the market and that is and the other thing is 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 that data when you have the right data and you present it the right way and and things just start to make sense you get that aha from from your audience and that is that is very very compelling for a strategist it's very satisfying to sort of see that. So hopefully these six engagements uh, have given you a sense for the kind of work uh, that I've done. Okay, so the, in, in terms of reflections um, um, for, from, my, from, from my career, the very first thing that I ask anyone trying to get into strategy is every time you get into any sort of situation, you need to quickly form a hypothesis, a hypothesis of what, of, of what the answer might look like Right. So there, this, there's this famous thing in Alice in Wonderland where, you know, she asked the, the cat where uh, the Cheshire cat uh, where she needs to go. And the cat asks her, where do you need to be? And uh, Alice says, I don't know where I need to be. Then the cat says, it doesn't matter where you go. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter what direction you follow, because since you don't have an end goal in mind, it's, uh, so the, the question, the the the, uh, the implication is, anyone who wants to get in, do anything like this, please have a direction, right? Um, you have to learn to solve problems quickly, and uh, you're you're really paid to think on your feet. Um, uh, you have to know your frameworks cold, and you can go research the kind of frameworks. I'm not going to spend any time on it because you're going to you're going to study it on all your courses. Uh, we strategists tend to dream in two by two matrices. Uh, look into what that is. Uh, you'll you'll know um, the service mindset. For me, uh, by my biggest, what 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 wakes me up in the morning is 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 being is about being a trusted advisor. Uh, you know, the moment you lose that trust, you start being uh, you stop being uh, being a, uh, a a good consultant and. And and now it's it's all uphill for you. So it's it's all about helping. It's all about client service, and then and and helping coach, coach, etc. You have to bring people along with you. Engineers often like to, um, uh, and I'm not disparaging engineers because I have a I'm an engineer myself and have a couple of degrees there as well. Um, but the thing is that you we like to come up with answers and give the answers to people. But you have to bring people along with you unless they are part of the journey. The, the answer did not come from them, and the answer doesn't matter at the end of the day. So this is a mindset shift uh, that that's not that's not natural to a lot of people. Structure, structure, structure. If you unless you uh, are structured, uh, no one's going to listen to you. Uh, if you um, if you um, aspire to be a, a, a consultant, etc. Um, and I, I I did say at the beginning uh, that I'm not going to delve on what firms, etc. There's a there, there is one piece of advice that I will give you. If you are going the consulting route, look beyond just firm uh, prestige and starting pay. Look at the type of projects they do, lifestyle, firm culture, leadership, all of those things, right? If you're going the corporate route, don't even waste your time with some of the smaller companies uh, seeking pure strategy jobs. Uh, um, the uh, important thing is they can't afford, afford uh, uh, a strategy purists uh, within the company, and they tend to be more tactically driven, and, and that's really the nature of the industry. Uh, and rotational job opportunities are great as well. So the, let's summarize it all, right? Uh, so P, you're getting paid for your strategic thinking, uh, understanding where everyone fits in, and being able to draw those maps internally in your head, being able to act decisively um, and, and uh, consistently. Consistency is a very big part of the strategy process, uh, being able to uh, have almost a poker phase, being unemotional, um, uh, you know, doing what's right for the client in a manner that's that's uh, that's very grounded, and then being able to influence the right people uh, and building commitment at the, at the right levels, and then bringing everyone along with you. And this is what the whole picture is all about. Right? Um, let's let's uh, talk about how to get there. And in my opinion, this is the most important part of uh, my presentation. Um, understand the, the the shift, right? Uh, understand what it is today, and then you know, there's nothing wrong with being tactical. There's nothing wrong with fo focusing on deliverables. 
um, choosing steps, and then nothing wrong with being grounded in reality and say, hey, we can't do it that way, etc. You know, being technically minded, uh, disputing technology selections, and then we'll be having a very clear idea of what what you do, what you don't do. Um, and then the thing is with the tactical mindset is that all the activities are are, are mired in the existing culture, and and then this is the reason why people can break out. People often ask me, hey, you know, I'm I'm I have this job, and I'm I want to grow, and I want to expand, and uh, what they don't understand is that they're what they're doing today is is based on a certain culture that they're they're part of. That culture has to change, uh, you know, if you if you want to grow, and part of that is about uh, is about the plan. When you become strategic, you become focused on the outcome, and and you end up choosing the path of least resistance. And it's about how how you can make it work, and how you can move the needle in a very fundamental way. And you know, I'm not saying this in terms of buzzwords or whatever it is, but it's really having that big picture in mind. Um, uh, it's it's really uh, about saying, hey, there is a problem. I see it. I can go fix it. This is everyone's job. Uh, it's about it's about starting off with a vision and working uh, through your plans in a backwards way. And the, the last point I think is is the most significant, which is um, culture supports activities. Activity when activities support culture, it becomes a tactically driven organization. But when you say I want to accomplish that, and I'm going to change my culture to accomplish that. That's when you start becoming real so strategic, and this uh, the shift in the mindset is very, very important. The second thing is uh, there's a bunch of things you can you can do, uh, and I'm addressing the STM um, uh, MBA uh, crowd uh, that's in my in my list of attendees. Um, there are certain things that you can work on uh, right during school. Uh, one is uh, pro bono consulting uh, activities with local companies. Nonprofits, uh, etc., and this is something that I did. Uh, I remember doing, and I, I recall some of those days very fondly. The second is networking. You um, need to be, you, you need to become pretty good at it, and not in the superficial um, uh, networking um, uh, construct that is often circulated around. Yeah, you need to go out and network, but no, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, this is about uh, picking an area that you're interested in, going and visiting companies, um, meeting people who are relevant, uh, who uh, you, who you, who you think can inspire you, who can get you up to the next level, and who will be a mentor and someone who you can one day give back to. You know, that's the, the giving back is the important part of networking. The third is eminence. Uh, you uh, you need to um, you, while consulting is a fairly generic, it, it, it's it's a it's a broad based thing. Uh, it's important to have passion around a few areas. I don't know what those areas are. Uh, it could be analytics. It could be something to do with um, with strategy itself. Uh, uh, something in retail. Uh, you pick your area. Follow some analysts and in those areas, and understand the trends, and and then you know be good at it, and then show passion around it, and that really helps. And finally, uh, the training itself, and this is the part that I'm going to not emphasize that much. This is something that a lot of you are already thinking about if you're thinking of consulting, which is taking the the right classes. Uh, although I will spend some time on, on what classes I think you should take. Uh, uh, internships that sort of set you up for a strategy type career and then doing case interviews. That's Mark Cosentino's photo up there. A lot of you guys are familiar with his book. And at the end of the day, uh, team skills, you have, you know, you, you have to uh, grow, grow beyond being an individual contributor and learn how to, how to work, get the most out of teams. And the key word is leverage. Uh, all of these are, are needed. Okay, let's talk about what courses I think you should take. I'm, I'm, I'll try to be brief about this, but foundationally, you you want to take strategy classes. You want to understand how finances work because that, to me, is is really grounding in in, in strategy, um, uh, economics, uh, understanding supply and demand. Uh, the soft the soft classes are very very important. Leadership communication type of classes, anything in product management, uh, marketing is very important, especially if you go on the on the corporate. Uh, strategy uh, side of things, uh, operations supply chain, understanding where where uh, people uh, different uh, players fit and where the value is, organizational management, uh, technology strategy is great. Uh, MIT offers a bunch of really great classes in uh, technology strategy. Uh, so does so does Harvard. Uh, understanding uh, cases uh, really helps bring perspective into what's happening today. Uh, risk decision, uh, uh, those are good classes. Uh, uh, 
in terms of nice to have, there's advanced classes that you can take at HBS, um, you know, Porter and Christensen and all those guys, and I recommend those very strongly if you can. Uh, business law is something that I found very useful because I find myself dealing with lawyers, uh, uh, you know, on, on multiple fronts. Uh, that's always useful. System dynamics to understand relationships. System architecture, this is core to SDM. I think it's a great class, uh, product design development. Um, I feel that's a very good class too, although it can be updated um, to re better reflect uh, the kind of areas that people eventually go into coming out of MIT, uh, especially into the Silicon Valley, et cetera. Uh, business law, I think I repeated myself there. Uh, global strategy is great. Uh, it's similar to um, uh, some of the advice I gave you about advanced strategic management. And then uh, optionally, power negotiation, uh, PE mergers, acquisition, corporate finance, all those are great as well. Um, uh, analytics. Uh, I found sales to be super useful. In fact, I'm still in touch with the professor who taught it to me. Uh, you'll see his uh, photo in one of the uh, uh, one of the things I'm going to show you. Um, I also want to talk to you about taking a step back from all this. There's no shortage of things that you can do while you're at MIT. Uh, but one thing is uh, for you to really uh, set a vision for yourself. Who do I want to become? Who do I want to look like uh, to be? It's not about uh, saying that superficially, but you know there is there's got to be an end, end vision. And for me, one way to get there is by following some inspirational people uh, out there. Not necessarily in my own area, but you know, uh, sort of spanning across my range of interests. Uh, I, I follow Simon Simonek. Uh, you, some of you guys can go watch her, his TED talk. That are very inspiring. Um, uh, Jeffrey Moore. I think he's a probably the most influential technology strategist in the last few decades uh, with this chasm theory. Uh, Jim Collins is great, uh, good to great, as, uh, and I had a, had a bunch of sequels to that. Uh, they're all great books to study on business. Uh, Sheena Iyengar on The Art of Choosing. Uh, Paul Krugman is my favorite economist. Uh, uh, Peter Levine is actually um, a, a, a hotshot Silicon Valley guy who, who was actually at MIT when I was out there. And, and I took sales from him, and I was I came out inspired. So I still follow him. Um, Genevieve Bell used to be um, uh, chief anthropo anthropologist at uh, at Intel. Uh, she's uh, she's doing a stint in Australia right now, and, uh, and you should read up on her. She's, she's pretty cool. And also, obviously, Michael Porter. I, a lot of you are familiar with him. All right. So, what's on my bookshelf? Um, uh, reading is a very large part of uh, the strategist uh, our daily routine. Uh, you still, you have to improve, and you have to keep abreast of what, what's happening. Uh, and for this, I'm going to recommend you uh, some of the things that are on my bookshelf. Uh, Michael Porter's uh, competitive advantage is excellent. Uh, go read about how BCG does it. Um, McKinsey does it. I don't really have a favorite. They all have their pros and cons. Um, books on innovation, back of the napkin scrape, Barbara Minto's uh, uh, books are um, obviously recommended during school. Uh, HBR's on strategy, you know, if, if you want a cheat sheet, I think that's a, that's a good investment. Uh, Blue Ocean uh, is, uh, to me, is more relevant than Porter's original uh, um, uh, book on competitive uh, theory because uh, the, the concept of competition is getting redefined in a world that is changing so fast. Uh, um, thinking strategically is good if you're interested in game theory, planning, uh, Jim Collins, he's here again, and then uh, uh, Jeffrey Moore and Clay Christensen, I don't really have to talk about them. Uh, and then um, uh, The Economist has a good book on business strategy, um, uh, and then uh, one of my favorite books is uh, Rumerich's uh, Good Strategy, Bad Strategy. I think if I think that's one of the most important books that any strategist should have a stable. And finally, Zone to Win is a new one again from Jeffrey Moore. Uh, Executing Strategy by Morgan and Levitt um, um, is, is also a, a good one. Look, I mean, this is uh, just my list. Uh, this is not exhaustive, and there's tons of other books out there. And books will tell you one thing: uh, reading HBR, reading uh, the Sloan Review, the Deloitte Review. Um, Wall Street Journal, uh, understanding how to work with tools like Tableau, Trilo, Facilitate.com, all of these will, will get you there. There's really no one silver bullet, and I've been lucky that I've been exposed to a bunch of these over the years, and I, I still pretty, uh, feel pretty uh, strongly uh, about it. But, uh, you know, so to, to, you know I, I, I wanted to wrap it up um, at, I, at this stage. Uh, you know, we talked about what uh, the strategy career is, uh, possible paths that people can take. 
and, and some mistakes people might do on the way and then some resources um, they can um, um, they can acquire or, or utilize to uh, to get to uh, uh, get to uh, a career uh, like uh, like this one uh, and as I said there's no magic bullet but there are a bunch of good principles and I, I, sh I shared some of those with you in this in this talk and I hope uh, some of you guys uh, found this uh, to be useful if there are I will share my contact details and also a PDF version of this presentation if you if we if you will find it useful uh, and uh, um, please get back to me if you have any uh, questions about, about this topic. As I said, the only questions that I will not respond to are how to get into a certain firm or how to pick a certain company or whatever. Those are gen generic uh, questions that, that you should be able to get help uh, for uh, uh, outside uh, with resources that MIT or, or whatever, wherever else uh, would we'll provide you. But other than that, uh, thanks for attending uh, my webinar and uh, thanks for the opportunity.